meantime, they are images that inspire, educate, and sometimes just make us say, wow. Yeah. Over the years, NASA has given us spectacular photos and renderings that reveal a colorful and mysterious universe. No doubt. And now, Chris Martinez is introducing us to two of the artists behind some of the most iconic space art in the galaxy. In a small, bright office, working side by side. Let's see. Uh, Robert Hurt and Tim Pyle bring the universe to life. What we're doing does have real science underlying it. Robert is an astrophysicist turned artist. Tim, once a Hollywood animator, is now a planet illustrator. Together, they produce some of NASA's most popular images, from renderings of how planets light years away could look, to actual photos of stars and galaxies captured by NASA's powerful telescopes. And this is sort of how it comes to me. And then I Many of those know. images have a dark, grainy start, but color and light reveal an astonishing glimpse of how the deepest regions of space might appear to the human eye. What I'm trying to do is show people sort of the, the broader colors that the universe has to offer. It's a delicate blend of imagination and data. The artists meet with NASA scientists over many drafts to ensure a planet or galaxy's look lines up with the research to make each one as accurate as possible. I love the challenge. It's kind of like a puzzle to me of trying to create something that looks really cool within the restrictions that were given by the scientists. It can take days, even weeks, to produce just a single image. The dazzling final results, enough to keep us all dreaming of the final frontier for years to come. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Pasadena, California. The artists also say they have to be especially careful when it comes to illustrations of other planets to avoid colors many of us would associate with Earth, like blue for water. The shot is compiled from data from NASA's VIRS instrument, which orbits the Earth about every 100 minutes, taking measurements of light coming off the planet. That can be translated into ribbons of imagery like this, and then into one of these. And this is just the latest in NASA's Earth from Space album, which may be one of the most mind-expanding collections of images in human history. Heart nebulas, celestial collisions, a bird's eye view of the Milky Way. Astronomers are charting the outer reaches of the cosmos and bringing back jaw-dropping images from telescopes like Hubble and its infrared cousin Spitzer. If you look down at the bottom of that Milky Way image, you'll see these two words, artist concept. This sweeping image of the Orion Nebula actually looks like this. And the TRAPPIST-1 star system, the latest discovery of seven potentially habitable exoplanets that made national headlines, it's really only a box of gray and white pixels. You see, space art is part of NASA's most fascinating images. Most space imagery begins with data, very, very complex data. And transforming these numbers and graphs into an image that captures the public's imagination requires a delicate balance between science and art. And that is where Robert comes in. As an astronomer and artist, Robert isn't editing images so much as he's making an artistic hypothesis grounded in facts, so we can visualize what's really happening up there. It's primarily taking data and making pictures out of it. That's what this is, a composite of data sets from several different instruments translated into a picture. The, to us, the really cool thing was the data set. Up until that point, there was no realistic color map of the globe anywhere. So the land layer here comes from the moderate resolution imaging spectral radiometer aboard Terra. And the tricky part here was the weather. So we actually had to take clouds out. They stashed the clouds for later, went onto the ocean. That came from an instrument that measures phytoplankton in the sea. Where it was low, I colored it dark blue because they're low mostly in mid-oceans. And then where it was a little bit higher, it was like a little bit brighter green. Then add the clouds back in. There's a small problem with it because there's a very slight gap in between each orbit. So some of those are painted on. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. Then? There was another layer to sort of simulate the atmosphere. And then there's this little bright spot. It's called the specular highlight. So it's the reflection of sunlight off of water. Those are the pieces, but you can't just slap them all together. It just didn't look realistic. It looks kind of flat or the clouds are sort of too see-through. So I just hit Command-Z a lot. There's artistry to creating the world. What I imagine it to be. Um, unfortunately, I'm not an astronaut. <laughs> I've never been to space. But 
I've looked at these images over and over again. Robert takes the scientific limitations seriously because the wrong color could be very misleading. Rendering an exoplanet with bright green continents would be kind of crossing a line for us. We don't want to say, hey, we found life on this planet, and showing green really would communicate that. It's enough to show some evidence of water. In fact, a lot of times we've made special efforts to make the water not look super appealing, you know, not like this tropical deep blue appearance, because you would think that complete accuracy would be the goal when you're doing astronomical illustrations, but it isn't always the case. The primary goal is communication. And understanding. Having a visual response to technical triumphs was something NASA latched onto early on. For over 50 years, NASA worked closely with artists and creative leaders like Walt Disney and Norman Rockwell to help shape the stories of spaceflight. It's the same legacy today, just with more advanced scientific understanding and better tools to imagine what far off worlds might look like if we could visit them. We want to take a lot of care to make sure we don't oversell the part of the story that isn't actually the story. There are people who just look and think, oh, NASA's photographed a planet, and they don't understand that actually that was a piece of art. On the other hand, if we don't do that, and we don't put a piece of compelling artwork, then people may never even look at the story anyway. We are a long way from sending a spacecraft to TRAPPIST-1, without warp drive, of course, so for now, the artwork will continue to stand as our best guess.